Welcome to today's Learn at Lunch program. I am Amy Hammond, the Fine Arts Curator at the State Museum of Pennsylvania. As a reminder, this session is being recorded. Please put your questions and comments in the Q&A box and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. Let's begin our program. Pennsylvania's landscape has been inspiring artists for centuries. I'm excited to be joined by Lauren Litwa, an artist who explores a deep connection to her natural surroundings. Lauren will be discussing Teclet's Ladder from the Fine Art Collection within the context of her larger body of work and explain the different approaches she takes when painting in plein air or outdoors and creating mystical environments in her studio work. Lauren Litwa is a graduate of the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts. She was awarded the Crescent Scholar Scholarship Award, a fellowship from the Center for Emerging Visual Artists and the Elizabeth Green Shields Foundation Grant for Painting. She has been a member of Assemblage, an artist collective from the tri-state area, which exhibited at the Delaware Art Museum in 2017. We will be posting a full uh, biography of Laura's with her website in the chat box. And welcome, Lauren. Hi. Hi. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for inviting me. This is very cool. And uh, we were going to get started with Tecla's Ladder. And uh, this painting was accessioned to the State Museum of Pennsylvania as an artist, Art of the State Purchase Award in 2015. And uh, just to provide some background information, what sparked your interest in painting? Uh, I was just one of those kids who always was drawing and painting and um, never really stopped. Um, I also had um, a mom who was painting porcelain and a, and a father who was very good at drawing. So it just kind of ran in the, in the family genes. Um, so it was just really kind of following my passion in life to study painting. That's great. And I, I love the tie into your family. And uh, that also relates to uh, the painting that we're looking at. Uh, who was Tekla and what is the symbolism, symbolism of the latter? Uh, Tekla was my grandmother. Um, I was just a baby when she passed. So my, she had 10 children and my father was her youngest child. So um, even though I didn't really know her, she uh, had a strong influence on, on the family. She was a very strong willed woman. Um, she came over from Krakow, you know, as a teenager by herself and, and um, met her husband here and they bought this, this farm, um, which is where I grew up. Um, my aunts and uncles and cousins, we all had a piece of land by what used to be the farm. So, um, she, um, yeah, she was a real character, very strong willed woman. And um, the farm was actually gone. Um, so this is actually a representation of, um, it's kind of like a, a, a memory of her um, and Tekla's ladder. Um, the ladder has a, a spiritual significance from, um, you know, this world to the next world. Um, and, uh, so that, that was kind of the idea behind this was uh, a strong sense of place, you know, with the, how, important, how important that farm was to, to um, my siblings and my aunts and uncles and cousins, you know, it was a, a real strong, um, important place. You know. And where was the farm located? In Twin Oaks, Pennsylvania, which um, was in Delaware County. So um, back when I was a kid, it was a very rural area. There was a lot of open land and uh, even dirt roads. So um, wow. it's all totally changed now and got developed and you know, close to the Conchester Highway, um, not that far from Philadelphia. So a lot of people have uh, moved in that area and it's, it's really built up now, but yeah. And uh, we are going to move uh, chronologically. Uh, this one is called Wondrous Falls. And how did you develop this composition? 
So this painting was influenced by actually a plein air painting. Um, I go to this place in the mountains, um, which is in Lycoming County. And uh, it's very, um, you know, there's not much there, just dirt roads and mountains and beautiful streams and um, creeks. Um, so this, this rock area, I had painted many times on location. This piece was done in the studio. And um, I wanted to create a, um, just kind of like going with the flow, these images kind of pop up in my mind. You know, the three trees, you know, they're, they're this kind of like a sim symbolism um, for like the Holy Trinity um, and the waterfall. And it's just kind of, and then the fields are kind of based on like Chad's Ford area. So I mm -hmm. compiled all these different elements and created this Wondrous Falls painting, which is, yeah. It's uh, painted on, on a wood panel, birch panel. And have you looked outside? Was this one inspired by a specific scene? So I've painted a lot of barns um, and have been um, influenced by a lot of the beautiful farmland in, in Lancaster County. Um, but when I paint a barn, I it, I, I change things around and I make it my own. And um, this mm -hmm. was a smaller piece. It was like 12 inch by 12 inch. And um, I just had this idea that, you know, I, I love the flying, the blackbirds and uh, um, it just, the, the pond kind of grew, everything kind of evolves in a natural way. So I, I don't have like a finished, picture in my mind, but as I'm working on it, you know, uh, like problems are solved, you know, and, and uh, I, as I was working on it, I just imagined, okay, so I'm in a house and I look out the window and I see this, you know, the, the, the shadows and, and the, the clouds reflecting and the birds flying off. And then that title just came to me. Have you looked outside? Like, wow, this is pretty cool, you know? So... Your, your, uh, the architecture of the barns always does look familiar to me. Um, I've spent a lot of time in central Pennsylvania as, as well, and it, it definitely has its own unique, their, its own unique characteristics. Yeah, I think they have such a, a sense of presence, you know, and, and um, being, you know, able to access that gorgeous landscape, you know, I think, you know, I feel very fortunate to, you know, have access to that and just, it has, you know, popped up in my work throughout the years and um, I enjoy painting them a lot. Speaking of architecture, uh, this one, corner of Anderson and Maine, uh, is is the real building located in a landscape scene or, or was this transported as well? So I was taking a back road in York, Pennsylvania and um, I came upon this group of buildings that were abandoned and it did not look like this, but what it, different elements were there. And I actually changed the composition, but I saw, you know, um, you know, the, um, those cool vents on top of the, the barn there. And uh, I ended up reconfiguring this landscape, but I saw elements that were actually on the corner of Anderson and Maine in York, Pennsylvania. And uh, this one's a pretty large painting. I had a blast painting it. Um, yeah, it was, it was definitely a lot of fun. And it was in a show at um, in uh, the Wayne Art Center. So it, it sold like right away, right after I painted it. But um, it was inspired by just roaming and taking a backcountry road and you find these cool things. And um, yeah, it was a lot of fun also. And what you see makes an impression. Yeah. And like, uh, this one. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, you know, you never know what you're going to see. And that's what's, that's what's cool. You know, that's what's really exciting to me. It's just to be open, open to uh, what's out there, you know, and using different elements and, and paintings. 
And uh, salute to the sun, which we can see now. Uh, why did you choose to focus on the sun in this painting? I've noticed you use the moon a lot. Yeah, so this painting was just about celebrating the beauty of nature and the sun. And also, I was influenced to do this painting by that yoga pose, salute to the sun. So I just pictured myself, you know, right on that platform doing a salute to the sun. And I just kind of made this setting. You know, to me, it's uh, also like, uh, I think of these as like stage settings almost, you know? Like some drama could happen or somebody could walk up on there. And um, But personally, I pictured myself doing a salute to the sun to this painting. So it's kind of a, a love, of, okay. love of nature, yeah. And a yoga influence as well. Yeah, and, and a yoga influence as well, yeah. And uh, the next two paintings we're gonna look at were painted in plein air. And uh, what are the benefits of, of painting out of doors? Well, um, this painting is, is up in uh, Acadia. Uh, Frenchman's Bay is up there and um, in Maine. Um, I was invited to, somebody came to the studio and um, said, oh, you have to come up, come up to Maine to paint. And she's like, you can stay in my, you can stay in my place. So um, I was super excited about having that opportunity. And um, this place was right off the side of the road. I pulled off the side of the road and set up, you know, my little chair and, you know, all my supplies um, and being, being on, on location and painting is, it can be like so very grounding, you know, and you can just get, um, you can lose yourself in the process of actually, you know, painting. And, and to me, it, it, it's like a high feeling when you're, you know, you get these, the right colors out and the things, you know, are happening. And um, so I forget the question, but <laughs> that answers it. This, this, yeah. I, well, I asked what the, what are the benefits of painting out of doors? Is there, is there something about it that makes it a grounding experience? Yeah, there's trying to capture the immediacy of, of the location. And, you know, it's a process of elimination because you, you know, I don't want to have, I'm, I'm not a, a, a photo realist. I, I like to, to get an essence of a location. I don't need to have too much detail. So when you're picking and choosing what you're going to include and what you're going to leave out and, you know, changing the colors around, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty exciting. When it's going well, it's really exciting. Yeah. And what do you need to consider before you're planning an outdoor trip to paint? You definitely want to be prepared with bug spray, sunscreen, I, I, I can't sit in the sun, so I try to choose a shaded place by a tree or whatever. And uh, um, yeah, you ha have to, you wanna be comfortable, you know? So, um, and I try not to stay too far from my car in case, you know, the weather changes. And um, so there's a lot to consider, but if you're adventurous, you know, it's, it's one of the best things in the world to go explore a new area and set up, set up your um, easel and your supplies. The other thing is, is I'm not a very public person. So when I'm painting out on location, I really don't like people by me. So I also try to hide myself. So <laughs> there's a car, you know, if I'm by a road, I don't want to be noticed. That's just me. That's just kind of like my hangout you know, my hang up about that. I, I prefer to have privacy and not be noticed, you know. I understand. And watch out for bears, of course. Watch out for bears. At this location, they were actually uh, pulling lobsters up out of the bay. So that was cool to watch that too. Yeah. Never know what you're going to see. Exactly. And uh, this one is uh, Acadia Park Spruce. And what, in terms of supplies, what artistic supplies do you take with you? So I was working in both oils and watercolors. So I had my car loaded with supplies. Um, this is, you know, obviously a watercolor. Um, 
And the other cool thing is um, I had the, the car I had at the time, the, the uh, passenger seat folded down. So I could actually use that as um, a tabletop and sit in my car and paint also, which was, which was nice too. Um, so it's, it's fun to switch from fluid, quick, transparent watercolors, and then to the more, you know, um, heavier oil, oil paints. Um, but yeah, I like the immediacy of working on watercolors outside because they tend to dry really quick. So you can get, you can get more layers built up, um, which is, it's like a bonus, you know, for me to, when you're, when you're mm -hmm. trying, to, you know, to be able to build up those layers. And uh, some of your the elements that you uh, take from your uh, plein air work sometimes make it into the studio. And uh, this one, the messenger, um, I was just interested in the title. Uh, who is the, the messenger in this one? So the, the messenger is the little white dove in the window, which has a, a spiritual significance also. Um, the messenger and the telephone pole is a form of communication also. So. Um, and the title came to me as I was working on it. Um, but I actually visited a Amish greenhouse and saw these white doves in this dark window. And I was like, oh, I have got to paint that, you know? So I saw, mm -hmm. saw that and uh, yeah, the idea just grew. And then the, um, um, the little tire marks, it, to me, it was just like a, a pickup truck just drove up there and kind of Curves, curves away and left those tire marks, tire tracks there. Um, so yeah, the messenger, the title came about maybe, you know, halfway or as I was working on it before it was completed. And that, that just recently sold, uh, which was nice, yeah. And our, our next work, this one has uh, different media than, than the others. And uh, why did you choose this approach to the subject? So I wanted to work on um, a really large watercolor. This is, this is um, on Arches paper, which was like 40, it was a big roll of Arches paper. So it was like 40, I think this painting is 47 by 51 inches. Um, and I laid, I actually stretched this on a canvas, which was also something new for me to do because um, when you're framing watercolors, it it's, can be very, very expensive. And I wanted to do something without putting it under glass. So um, I worked on this on the floor and I was really interested in building up a lot of different textures. So I was using uh, powdered pigments in this, which are some, um, there's some bronze and gold powdered pigments in this and ink, black ink and watercolor. Um, and uh, yeah, it was actually a lot of fun painting this. So um, it was a challenge that I, that, that I made for myself and I, I really enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to doing more of this, this kind of work. Working, working on the on the floor, um, and then moving the painting around, you know, so you can work on it on on an easel also, and then, yeah. And those I actually put my hands in that painting, so that gives you a, an idea of the scale of how big the painting is. That that they're my hands, yeah. Is this a portrait in the center? That is an imaginary uh, nature figure that I just started drawing. Sometimes things just come to you, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the dragonflies are, um, yeah, they're, they're a, a beautiful symbol also. And, and, the, and the white hawk, um, it has spiritual significance. 
And for our for the next painting, this seems like a tribute to both the dream world and nature. What is the significance of the Luna moths that you can see here? So the Luna moths are, are um, I've I've always loved the the shape and um, you know there there's certain things in the world that just seem magical. You know, a Luna moth mm -hmm. is kind of magical. You know, there's just so be beautiful and ethereal. Um, again, I, I like the significance of the three, the three um, butterflies, moths. And um, this painting actually is about, um, I have a, a cabin on top of a mountain in Lycoming County. And I sit there and look out over, uh, you know, watching the stars, shooting stars and, and the moon. And uh, so the house represents the cabin up there. And um, again, there's the ladder, ladder up to the, the window, which um, I did, I did actually see that one time and I, and I had to paint, I had to paint that. Um, so it's fun to, to just kind of, uh, you know, you have an idea of elements that you want to put into a painting and then to just, you know, incorporate it and make it work is, is a lot of fun. So. I, I feel like this is a pretty successful painting. Yes, and uh, I love the inclusion of the fox in, in this painting. And to me, this just really has a narrative quality. I, I just look at this and I keep thinking about what's happening. And uh, speak, going back to the title, uh, who are the visitors? And is there a specific meaning behind the fox? Yeah, so this, this these beams coming out of the sky are kind of, I've been influenced by a lot of different things, including movies like um, M. Night Shyamalan. He's done a lot of um, movies. Um, he's, he was creating, or he lived in um, Pennsylvania. I don't know if he's still there, but I was influenced by his movie Signs. And I did several paintings, um, these beams coming down. And uh, so it has to do with, you know, life out there in the universe besides what's on our planet. And the, um, I like the sense of mystery about this piece. Um, so the visitor is also, you know, the fox is visiting, which I, I love foxes. So I included them in several paintings. Um, and uh, yeah, there's like a, a sense of, in this painting, I feel like there's a sense of something's about to happen, you know, which mm -hmm. I, I, I like that about this piece. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of like one thing leads to another with, with uh, incorporating different elements, you know. And this one to me feels very surreal. Uh, was this one inspired by a dream? Yes, yes. Um, I've been dreaming of flying since I was a kid and flying and feeling like I'm really in the, I'm really actually flying. It seems so real. Um, <laughs> this painting, yeah, is, is inspired by a dream and it's about leaving, leaving the past and moving on into a, a brighter future is what this is about. Um, again, you know, the elements of the, the, the natural elements and um, including the sky and the water and, and the full moon, they're all kind of like symbolisms, you know, along with the white birch tree. Um, yeah, so, and this one was um, actually purchased by the Butler Trust Fund, the um, Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts, the fellowship. Um, collect work. So they recently um, purchased this painting, which, which I was very, very thrilled about that. So yeah, that's great. That's wonderful. Thanks. And portal two, uh, the the portal or the circle is a recurring theme in your work. What does the what does it represent? So, um, you know, I was thinking the uh, Again, things just kind of pop up, you know, um, when I'm looking at a blank canvas. Um, and 
I, I like this idea of the portal because it's like a, a, a separation or an entry into another world. So you have the, the, this foreground and then this opening into another world. Um, and I've been fooling around with this idea for a while. Um, it also is connected to the, um, you know, the universe and what's out there in the universe. It's not just what we are, you know, on this planet, there's, there's more life out there. Um, and including the, the, uh, the flower elements. And uh, again, there's a Luna moth in there. You know, I, I am passionate about, about nature and, and gardening and flowers and um, some of these flowers actually were, um, I've gone to Longwood Gardens and gotten some reference material from, from you know, the beautiful greenhouses there. And um, so, yeah, so this is kind of like a, a dream-like otherworldly place, you know? And it definitely has some um, elements of Chad's Ford, you know, the fields and the beauty of Pennsylvania. And, uh, you know, I, I love watching the sky. So I, I include a lot of, you know, elements in the sky. And it's interesting too, that this one includes both night and day, which is, uh, seems to maybe also be the case in earth energy with a box turtle. And uh, are these elements also that you discovered in your, your hikes and your travels? Yeah, so um, it, yeah, there's a box turtle in there and that box, I had a pet box turtle when I was a kid. Um, mm -hmm. So I have like a strong affinity for, for nature and animals and, um, and I, it's fun to include these different elements in, into, the, into the painting. Um, this painting is about well, the, you know, we, we get energy from, from our star, you know, the sun, you know, that comes down to the planet. And um, it's also about, on the left side is uh, a little landscape in the background where it's um, representing Chad's Ford and uh, Beaver Valley. The, there's a tower in, in Beaver Valley. So I've hiked there with my dogs for many years and then I made a move to Oxford and that little landscape on the right re represents Oxford. Um, so there's a little farm, farm uh, buildings back there. Um, so this is like a, 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 you know, a mixture of all these things coming together. And um, I like to, I like to push things in, um, you know, I know it's, it's a, uh, uh, it's not always easy to talk about, but, you know, these I just, ideas just come about and one thing leads to another. And so I, I feel like this is a, this is one of the pieces that was in the um, Delaware Art Museum show. And I just feel very, very happy with the end results on this, this one. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful tribute to Pennsylvania landscape and nature. Thank you. Thanks. And uh, many new moons. And I noticed that we have a new animal friend here, the owl. And uh, is this one more of a celebration of night? Yeah, definitely more about night, many new moons. It started, the idea started out with uh, several years ago, there was a, a blood moon it was like a summer night and I was so excited to see this blood moon. Um, and it was, it was a cloudy night and um, you know, the, the clouds were moving over the moon and every once in a while it would peek out and then go away anyway. So I saw that and I was like, oh my God, I have to paint that. So <laughs> as I was planning this painting out, it was the moon was reflected in the pond and the owl was just, you know, it's such a, a beautiful mystical um, messenger, you know, the owl is, is very symbolic also. Um, so 
yeah, one thing led to the other with this painting and, and um, yeah, this, this was the end result. This was the other one that was in the Delaware Art Museum show. Um, so yeah, the, the Luna Moss and the owls and the, um, you know, the snake figures in there, they're all kind of like, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I noticed the snake figures were in the last one as well. Do they are they just uh, something that you see, or, or is there a meaning behind them? Well, I I love snakes. Um, I don't love rattlesnakes, but I love snakes. You know, when I'm in the mountains and you can find a, a ring neck snake, or um, they're just beautiful, beautiful you know creatures, and I love the shape of it. So I'm incorporating the the, you know, the movement of the snake along with those ribbons there, um, and it creates an upward feel to the painting. Um, and, you know, there's, there, there's also the, the, uh, the owl there, the owl probably, you know, makes a living off of eating snakes too. So, mm -hmm. yeah, which I never thought of that before, but. It's an, an ecosystem. Yeah, yeah, right. And Eternal November, would you mind uh, telling us at the background of this fall scene? Yeah, so this um, actually was influenced by an actual night. Sorry. An old neighbor um, had a party um, when I was living in Oxford. So um, the party was a, a, guy, a Guy Fawkes bonfire party. And so when I walked over there, and I saw the full moon and then that light behind the barn casting that shadow. I was just struck with, it was just so gorgeous. It was like a October night and it was just stunning. And I knew I wanted to paint it. Um, so I actually did four, a series of four of these, um, these barn paintings. These, these are like um, 20 inches high by 16 inches. And um, so yeah, it was influenced by an actual night. You know, sometimes you get these moments where you just, you know, your your mind almost takes a picture of it and it, you know, you're stunned by how beautiful it was. Mm -hmm. That was one of those nights and I, I, uh, I really enjoyed painting that a lot. Left an impression. Yes, yes. And uh, this is portal three. And it seems also in this one, like we're looking at, at two worlds, or do they represent land and sea? Um, sky and, and I, this one was pretty much in, influenced also by uh, a visit to Sedona, Arizona. And um, yeah, the, uh, this one's uh, just very much about the beauty of nature and uh, continuing with that portal theme. I like the idea of you visualizing going it through that portal. And it probably has something to do with my flying dreams too, because to me, I can almost imagine flying through there, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And there's some little fish there. I used to have a fish pond. And um, so uh, these elements I, I love, I love like the little salamander from from finding them in, in the mountains. Um, so yeah, the flying, I never thought of that before, but that's influenced by flying dreams also. Yeah. And the remaining paintings that we have were all painted this year in 2021. And entry point double butterfly, uh, what, what is the entry point? So again, that is, um, that triangle is pointing to the to another world to to the, you know other worlds. Um, this was painted right when COVID was kind of starting, and I didn't realize it until later. But there's these little little elements in there, the little starburst um, elements down there. Yeah, right there, that are. Um, 
evidently what COVID looks like under a microscope, I guess. And I was not <laughs> conscious of doing that. And I find that that does happen occasionally, you know, these um, unco unconscious uh, images pop up. But um, this very much is about um, feeling the need to protect the oceans. And I have a, a love of whales and um, the double butterflies. Um, you know, there, there are symbols um, referencing, you know, uh, it's, it's, hard, it's hard for me to, to explain sometime, but it kind of like compiles all together and, and um, yeah, so it's definitely also another other otherworldly um, piece. Yeah. And uh, this one, uh, Garden of Many Blessings, does this represent one specific garden or is it also a composite? This is very much an imaginary place. It's influenced by my old garden pond, which, um, you know, there's the fish in there again, and uh, the beams, the otherworldly uh, elements, and the the white hawk, which which is uh, a, a spiritual symbol. So um, the the natural elements, along with the um, the spiritual aspects, were were what really um, influenced this piece the little landscape back there you know that's that's also tie ties into um some places in the mountains that i've i've seen so it's yeah kind of incorporates all those elements and uh masha at the canyon and uh this one also to me has a, as a, a narrative feel and uh, would you mind telling us about Masha who's making a, a special guest appearance in the background? Yeah, Masha's here somewhere. She's taking a nap. So um, I visited the Grand Canyon with my sister several years ago and I'd never been out there. Um, this is actually a painting on copper. Um, I started painting on copper maybe about a year ago. Um, 12 by 12 inch painting. And I was um, interested in, you know, to even try to paint the Grand Canyon is kind of like ridiculous because it's so gorgeous, you know, if you can even, <laughs> if you can even try to capture a little bit of its beauty, you know, it's, it's uh, a challenge. Um, but this one was just kind of intuitive and, and um, you know, I was, I was happy with the way the, the, the canyon looks in it. And it ended up sometimes, you know, uh, as I'm drawing things just kind of come out and um, Masha, my little cat, ended up being in this piece too. So it ended up being Masha in the canyon. So, yeah. <laughs> And our last painting, uh, the Ford Ballard House, this is located in Chester County. And uh, could you tell us a little bit about the, the background of this painting? Yeah, so this was a commissioned um, painting that someone wanted me to do uh, for her husband. And um, the directions were, um, you know, that they want, wanted, me to include the um, 1935 Ford Cabriolet, the three dogs in the window, and, you know, definitely have an American flag on it. But she was like, but I want you to do you. I want your painting. I love your paintings, your color. So I really changed things a lot of, I changed a lot around about the actual location to make this composition work. The garage was bigger, the house stretched out more. I simplified a lot of things and um, changed a lot of things around. But the end result is that this is the essence of, of their home. Um, and uh, she's thrilled with it. And um, she had bought, she actually bought the, the um, 
the York painting. Um, so the one that on the corner of Anderson and Maine. So the same mm -hmm. person commissioned this piece, which this is, um, this is a 30 by 40 inch oil on linen um, canvas. So it was definitely a challenge to paint. It took a lot longer than I thought. I'm not, you know, normally painting antique cars, but I actually, you know, it was, a, it was a lot of fun and I'm thrilled with the end result. So yeah, so this, was, this one is brand new. I just finished this one up. Very recent work. And uh, I think we are at a great time to move to question and answer. And um, what do you find uh, most fascinating about Pennsylvania landscapes? Well, I think Pennsylvania is a gorgeous state. There's so many beautiful areas, so many beautiful um, open natural areas. Um, I'm living in Maryland right now, but I am a, I'm a Pennsylvania artist. I still have my cabin in, in Pennsylvania. And um, there's just a lot, a lot of just natural beauty, you know, and, and wild areas, nature areas that uh, I think we're very fortunate. Beautiful forests and um, especially in the mountains to watch the night sky, you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. just stunning, really beautiful certainly is. And uh, how do you select the venues for our, your paintings? You mean where I show? I, yes, I think that is, is the question. Yeah. Um, so I was supposed to have a one person show uh, last April and it got canceled due to COVID. So um, basically right now I'm just showing um, uh, and, you know, people come to my studio and uh, I just had somebody come and buy a piece a couple of weeks ago. Um, and um, I've shown in various locations. Uh, the one show I have coming up next is uh, Bridget Meyer Gallery in Philadelphia. She's having a fundraiser. She's um, so I'll be showing there in, uh, in October. Um, and that's, that's the, the next show I have coming up. And I'm always looking for, for venues, new, new opportunities to exhibit, the right kind of opportunities, you know, to exhibit. So we'll see what's next. And uh, we have uh, uh, an, an added detail. Uh, how do you choose the locales of the scenes depicted? Is there something about uh, a scene that, that catches your eye? Yeah. Um, geez, a, a lot of those areas where I've, I've, uh, I've gotten uh, some ideas just driving around in the country. And um, not all of my work is based on actual sites. A lot of them are co uh, compiled in and uh, they're made up locations. So I'm actually creating these areas. Um, so I take snippets, bits and pieces of actual um, objects or, or places and incorporate it into what I consider to be almost like a new world or, or a, a new stage setting that you can en enter into. And, um, and that's kind of what, what I, what I try to um, incorporate into some of these paintings is is uh, you know, it's it's an essence of like a strange place. It's not it's not of the earth, you know. It had, maybe has earth elements, and um, you know, I, and I, I like to I like to push the color, you know, like this this is a representational house and garage, but the, you know that's not a realistic sky, you know. There's colors, you know. It's uh, to me that's very important. Uh, in my work, you know, is, is pushing that. How do you decide what material to paint on? Uh, for example, wood panel, canvas, or linen? So I paint on um, all those surfaces, including the copper. Um, lately, I've been preferring um, the finer surfaces of a uh, of, of really nice linen and um, 
but I'm open to I'm open to working on wood also and um, and like I said the copper is fun because you can actually scratch into that surface um, and get down to the metal which you know has a little bit of sculptural qualities to it scratching into it and taking away and then adding more layers of paint on top of it again um, yeah so I like working on all those surfaces, yeah. Is there a risk of copper weathering? So there is, um, 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 yeah, there is. So you can actually apply a varnish to it to protect the surface. So um, I have uh, some spray varnishes that I use to coat the, the finished product because they can, um, you know, actually change over time if you don't protect the surface. Yeah. And uh, we have, looks like we have two more questions here. Do you have any advice for artists who are just getting started painting in plein air? Um, yeah, it's kind of like you have to just get out there and do it and don't put pressure on yourself to do the perfect painting. Just go out and experiment and um, definitely keep at it. Um, you know, it's, and also I, I think it's important for, for an artist to, to do it your way, you know? Do it your way, it's your vision. Nobody else is gonna paint like you paint, you know? You're all unique, so that's, that's kind of the beauty of it, you know? And uh, our last question here, uh, what are the sources of the symbols that you use in your work? Well, pretty much this, they're just made up, you know, they're pretty much made up um, elements, design elements, things that I, that I like that have uh, kind of I've picked up over the years. Um, and I'm always open, open to, uh, to changing things up and, and pushing it to a new level. So um, it'll, be, it'll be fun to see what, what new things come up to, new images and, you know, one painting kind of leads to another. So mm -hmm. bring uh, elements from something that you painted two years ago, you could incorporate it into a new painting, but that's the fun of it. You know, it's, it's always kind of changing and evolving, you know. So. Yes, well, thank you very much, Lauren, for taking the time to share your work with us today. It's my pleasure. Thanks, Amy, for asking me. Appreciate it. Well, thank you so much. And we will be following up with an email uh, with the recording for, uh, for individuals who are, uh, would like to watch it again. And uh, just a note, the next artist conversation will be featured artists from Art of the State uh, in 2021. And uh, we will have just received the artwork in the museum, which was very exciting. And we are gonna feature some, uh, a virtual presentation of the artists to, um, to talk a little bit about their work. And thank you everyone for joining us today. And uh, there, I think we do have a list of upcoming, uh, upcoming Learn at Lunch programs on our website. So have a great weekend, everybody.